Hi. Welcome to rainy Sorrento. Everyone's hiding from the rain. Hi, I'm Laura Bronner, a girl with a backpack and a camera, traveling the world to learn more about the people and places and food in it, and hopefully sharing some of those adventures with you. If you've been watching this channel for a little while, you may have noticed just how much I love Italy. I simply can't stay away. So this week, I met up with my mom as she celebrated her birthday with her best friend in the Amalfi Coast. We climbed the hills and the stairs of Positano, took a boat trip to Ischia, and we're now here in Sorrento, learning the true art of il dolce far niente, the sweetness of doing nothing. Nothing except eating and swimming and exploring this beautiful, lemon-loving town, of course. Sorrento is a small coastal town in southern Italy, located on the Sorrentine Peninsula. It faces the Bay of Naples and therefore offers one of the most incredible views back over Mount Vesuvius. We arrived and went straight to our hotel, Hotel Il Fado, which is located right at the port of Sorrento. The best part about this hotel was the rooftop pool and bar area, where you can take in some stunning sunsets and drink delicious limoncello spritzes. They have a pretty nice breakfast buffet included each morning. Depending on what time of year you book, you can get a room for as little as $75 per night. I'll link to the booking.com page in the description below. Sorrento has a beautiful old town, which is where we spent the majority of our two days here. If you're staying near the port like we did, you can hike up the hill or you can take an elevator, which is near the beach clubs, and costs only one euro each way. It takes you right to the center of the old town and back down again. During the summer, it's open until midnight. Once you're in the old town, there are some sites that you do not want to miss, like Piazza Tasso, named for the 16th century poet Torquato Tasso, who was born in Sorrento. The piazza has tons of little cafes and shops, and it's also right at the center of the main street, Corso Italia. To one side, you have the slightly more modern side of the street, which is still open to cars and where you can find some great restaurants, as well as plenty of high street fashion brands. In that direction, you'll also find the Museo Coreale di Terranova, which is an 18th century villa home to decorative art and beautiful paintings. From here, you can also take in some incredible views back over the bay. In the other direction, Corso Italia becomes pedestrian only, which is a loose rule in Italy at the best of times, and where you will find the stunning old school architecture and plenty of side streets to get lost behind. Along this side, you'll find the Cathedral of Saints Philip and James, or simply known as the Sorrento Cathedral. Originally built in the 11th century, it was rebuilt again in the 15th century. Don't forget to look up at the incredible detail around the interior. While you're in Sorrento, be sure to try some local delights, like gnocchi alla sorrentina, which is fluffy gnocchi served in a sauce made of tomatoes and mozzarella mixed together to create what can only be described as pure heaven. I had mine at the cute Enjoy the Little Things Bistro. For dinner, make your way to Marina Grande, a downhill walk to a port that is packed with great restaurants. 
I personally loved Da Amelia. But if you really want to experience Il Dolce Far Niente in Sorrento, you have to get yourself to one of the beach clubs along the main port area. There aren't any free beaches in Sorrento, except for if you're a local. So if you want to take a dip in the bay, you have to pay for a bed at one of the beach clubs here. They range from 15 to 25 euros, depending on the place and which seat you choose. We went to Marameo and paid 20 euros per person, and then enjoyed plenty of sunshine, delicious drinks, and a seriously good prosciutto and mozzarella sandwich. Be sure to say hi to Gina when you visit. I hope you enjoyed exploring Sorrento with me. This town is a fantastic jumping off point for visiting more of the Amalfi Coast, and I'm already plotting how I can get back here to explore more, as well as enjoy more of the sweetness of doing nothing. I'll see you next week as my mom and I head north to Florence and explore all of the incredible history and beauty of that famous Tuscan city. Thanks as always for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.